we are here with the uh, Renault Magnum Excellence, um, rather smart looking um, truck, which I have uh, souped up a little bit, you can kind of see here, it's got some nice new tyres on it, nice uh, exhaust coming out here, a load of lights on the front, um, yeah, it's a pretty sweet looking truck. Now, maybe some of my newer subscribers don't know that I play Euro Truck Simulator well, um, was one of the first games I kind of played and over the years of having my channel I've dipped back into it and uh, you know as it's kind of come and gone and um, I really love the game and I was watching a video the other day by uh, the Whisper Games uh, she's got a great channel by the way I recommend you check it out and uh, she was playing some Euro Truck Sim and I just could not resist um, jumping back in and playing some more you know I just really really enjoy this game uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, we are based in London right now because there was an update and when it's an update it kind of resets you to your home garage and um, I actually saw this special cargo here going to Gantz in Austria and I thought that might be quite a nice drive. It takes us from London to Dover, into France, into Belgium, Germany. But then I thought I quite like France. Um, I, I, I like the French update pack that they've got it's pretty cool but I don't really think why is my mouse suddenly stopped what <laughs> okay okay that was weird um, wow look at that constructed staircase that looks like quite a cool little one actually I think that's part of the DLC one, we could maybe get that, and then from there we could maybe get another job. Let's do that. That looks pretty cool, actually. Uh, your pants are if you can't try a heavy haul. Um, I'll get my thing, it's not exactly great for heavy hauling, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, or maybe not. <laughs> uh, instead, I think I might go for one of these special cargoes. So I thought I could do that one, or I could do that one in Switzerland. I feel like we want to do that. It's a little bit more cash. Let's go. So if you don't know what you do in Euro Truck Simulator, you drive a truck around. Um, let me get back into the cab. There we go. It always puts my parking brake on for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, you, you drive a truck around. Uh, you deliver things with your truck. And you drive around Europe in your truck. Um... You might think like, oh, that doesn't sound very fun. It is. It, it really is. I can't remember which side of the road we drive on in the UK. <laughs> uh, it is the left, yeah. Um, I mean, a uh, uh, left-hand drive car, which is not typically an English one, but most of the continent do um, drive uh, on the right. So better to have a left-hand drive truck. Us in the UK, we just we just like to do things a little bit different. Um, okay. And uh, I quite like Euro Truck Sim because it gives me a chance to just kind of ramble along. Oh look, there's the gherkin. I didn't know they had that. That's quite hilarious. Um, it's uh, of like a building in the financial district right in the centre of London. for us hopefully. Oh for God's sake. My A button isn't my A button. If that makes sense I have to press enter. There we go. Okay. What do we want to do? Oh, look, look at this. They've got some interesting things we could take. Bloody hell look at that. Uh, but we're going to take this. We're going to take the, the forklift trucks. Um, they're not that heavy either. Uh, we're going to take them to Graz in Austria. And they're over there, so we're going to have to back up and uh, pick that up. It's a bit louder when you kind of get out inside the truck, but for parking, it's kind of like an assembly of parking, but 
and uh, drive around in London is a pain in the backside. Um, but once I get out of London, usually when I'm driving, I really enjoy it. Um, I take a bit more of a scenic route. I don't enjoy driving along the motorways. I find it just thoroughly boring. Uh, I like it in Euro trucks in because, I mean, that's what you can do. But um, and also you're in a truck, so it's a lot easier. Um, but in real life, I prefer driving a bit more scenic routes. So I generally go like on the B roads, um, which, uh, for those who don't know, uh, in the UK we have like different classification of roads. There's um, your motorways, which are your M numbers. So like the M1 or M2 or M3, we get over a bridge. I usually pop outside when we go over a bridge because uh, it's quite cool. Uh, I don't know what bridge this is actually. There's one coming out of London anyway. Um, it's quite high, so I hate driving over bridges in real life. Absolutely hate it. Um, really despise it. I'm terrified of heights, but obviously in, in the video game I'm fine with it. That's how cargo as well, in case you haven't seen it. It's, it's a load of forklift trucks, and of which they're going to pay us like 59,000 <laughs> euros for the privilege of taking this all the way to Austria. Let's get back in the cab now, and over the bridge. There we go. Um, yeah, as I was saying, we have M roads, which are the motorways, you know, and there's always a, a 70 mile an hour speed limit on them. Uh, and they're usually multi-laned, well, they're always multi-laned, at least uh, two, most of the time more, three, sometimes four lanes, sometimes even more in some places. Um, Sometimes they can be a toll road, and otherwise you have to pay to drive along it. But that's very rare in the UK. There's only a couple I can actually think of offhand um, that I've actually driven on before. Am I going to actually overtake this car? I don't think I am. He's matching me speed for speed. Um, and then you have A roads, which are usually oh uh, god, there was a car behind me. I nearly smashed into him. Um, you have A roads which are like usually single um, lane roads but sometimes double like this is the A2 we're on now so it can also be what's called a dual carriageway um, again 70 mile an hour speed limit um, on these as well and then you have B roads which are the single lane roads um, which kind of drive around they're often a bit windier and you know a bit more scenic I like driving on the B roads um, personally, I like the kind of driving around the little villages and you know going through them and stuff like that. And I'm not a speed merchant by any means. I don't have a particularly fast car in real life. Um, very much. Um, okay, we're turning off here. Uh, I've got like a Mazda 2. It's a really nice car. I really really like it a lot, but it's it's not fast. <laughs> um, gets me around you know and uh, it's comfortable on long journeys and it's small and nippy enough around you know town and cities to be a, a really enjoyable um, okay kind of look both ways there okay ding -tong, ding -tong, ding -tong. Um, yeah but it's small and enjoyable enough that it's fine but um, yeah I love driving around the B roads and I usually take that route and to be fair it probably adds on half an hour to 45 minutes to my journey time which some people might be like well that's ridiculous but for me it's about the journey not the destination I know that's a cliche but if I'm going to be in a car for three hours I kind of want to enjoy the journey a little bit um, rather than just being on the motorway just foot in one place I know some people enjoy that I know some people enjoy that kind of like uh, experience and I'm not one of them so I will often uh to drive along these type of roads this is a b road uh you know it's a bit more scenic it's a bit nicer uh and yeah just all around more enjoyable uh drive generally so i guess it depends what you like but that's what i prefer so i generally take that so you know it's it, it takes me about three and a half hours maybe if i stayed on the a roads or the motorway it would take i don't know three maybe a bit less um but i wouldn't enjoy it as much so if you're going to drive for three hours, you might as well enjoy it, or three, three and a half hours. Okay, so we are heading to Southampton. This is, this looks like Dover around here. Okay, 
That's also my parking brake, so <laughs> uh, that's weird. Uh, okay, well, anyway, uh, wipers will just set to M. I don't, I don't use cruise control, so um, we'll just turn them on. There we go. I say, yeah, I think I was saying like how much it costs to park here, yeah, so that's ridiculous, and obviously it can be a little bit more stressful to drive I actually have quite a nice route I go to work on, again it takes me about 5-10 to 10 minutes longer than if I went along the main roads but it, um, it, it there's rarely any traffic um, on the route I go, like not, there, there would be what normal people would class as traffic, but not London traffic uh We are going to go to Calais for the folks, it's going to cost us 300 euros. And it's going to take us over in the uh, Eurostar. Okay. Still raining because, of course, it is in um, France. We'll just carefully. Wipers a bit heavier. I love a good bit of rain though. And this is a good bit of rain. <laughs> um, oh god, is this not the exit? Have I gone the wrong way? I think it is actually. Oh, it is. I know. I know where I'm going. Don't worry. Um, so yeah, as I said, kind of like having a car in London is a bit dumb. But obviously, because I travel. Um, around a bit, it 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 makes sense for me anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't have like a really expensive car or anything like that. It's pretty cheap to run. Having said that, I've got to get an MOT soon. For those who don't know, in the UK, uh, you have to get what's called an MOT, um, which is like a, a Ministry of Transport certificate, which basically. Um, carriage will do a check over on your car to make sure it's safety compliant um, 
in, in their guidelines they'll check things like your tires have got enough tread um, seat belts are all working um, you know your lights are all working or your you know stuff like that um, it's quite a comprehensive list um, uh, you know, they'll check your brakes out they'll check out things like your suspension um, you know is it all smashed up everything so that you know the idea is that if you're driving on the road you're safe and, and you're not putting anybody else in danger either I think I just clicked a curb there um, I don't think they do that in a lot of countries actually um, usually the, the test costs about 50 pounds um, maybe a little bit more um, and obviously that doesn't include any work you might have to get done on your car to pass the test now I'm hoping fingers crossed that my car does pass I don't have to spend money to get it repaired um, I think it will I don't know of any problems I actually have to change a light one of my lights is out so I have to uh, get a bolt for that but that's like a fiver to be fair that's not an expensive thing I just have to learn how to do it myself or get a mechanic to do that but I haven't had any uh, touch wood my desk is wood so that counts I haven't had any technical problems with it or mechanical problems with it um, since I got it um, it's a Japanese car so they're, they're known as being very reliable especially around the engines and that's specifically why I got it uh, I remember many years ago uh, the first well, the first car I ever had was a Fit no, uh, no it was sorry um, Vauxhall Nova it was horrible um, it was a horrible little car but um, I brought that privately but it did last and it was actually totally fine it did last a long time uh, the second car I brought was kind of like my first big purchase for a car. It cost me £3,000. I got a loan out. I was, I want to say 20. And I was driving to work. And the drive to work was about an hour. Um, and I, uh, so I was like, I want a bit of a better car. And I got a Fit, but uh, it had electric windows. And that was like amazing at the time. But uh, I brought it from a garage. Uh, not like a, a proper garage, like a second hand garage and uh, I was driving it for maybe uh, 10 days and the clutch went <laughs> uh, the clutch for those who don't know, maybe you're not a driver is basically it's what disengages the drive shaft from your wheels so you need it to change gear so when you change gear you, you press down the clutch you change your gear and then you re-engage the clutch um, if you don't do that you're just grinding the gears changing them you know um, it's not quite yeah like you, you obviously automatic cars will have an automatic clutch that will do that for you they'll, they'll have automatic gear change um, but most cars are manual and you have to do it yourself but um, yeah the clutch went and I think it's because I did about probably 500 miles in the first kind of like 10 days of owning that car um, but it was good because the car was under warranty for like 3 months and uh, so they took it in and fixed it for me and I got like a whole brand new clutch for free and, and a clutch is expensive that's like a thousand pounds plus probably um, maybe not that much maybe about 500 um, but it's expensive and uh, I had a few problems with that car a few engine problems um, I think Fiat is much better nowadays but in the time when I brought it which was about 15, 16 years ago um, they weren't that reliable and um, yeah, I had a few things break with that car after that I brought um, I came into some money and I brought um, a Fiat, uh, sorry, a Ford KA or Ford car however you want to call it and I love that thing I love the look of them I, I think they're really nice to look at these are the slightly older ones now I think the newer ones are nowhere near as nice but they had a really unique look to them I really liked the way it was styled inside and a friend of mine was selling one and it belonged to his girlfriend and um, uh, obviously I knew it I knew her I knew she drove it well she had it from brand, brand new uh, didn't even have that many miles on the clock as well and I got it for about £5,000 and um, I never had a problem with the car uh, ever had a problem with the car and then when I moved to London I sold it uh, because I was like there's no point in having a car in London you're just paying for the insurance and the tax but and for the first 
six years of living in London, uh, I was fine without a car, but now I actually like having a car again. It does give you that, just that bit of freedom. Um, plus, I am looking to move out of London um, when I can. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for a position to come up in my company outside of London. Um, and uh, I'll probably take one when one comes up, hopefully. I'll try to anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's um, it's quite nice having it. I say you do have that freedom, and it, it is quite essential outside of London, unless you live in, say, Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, Newcastle, where there's better transport links. Like, outside of London, the transport is really bad if you're not in a city. Um, you know, you're talking like a bus every hour and stuff like that and train stations that are miles away from you know where you might live so you really do need a car um, I guess that's probably the same in most places though um, but uh, yeah it's uh, it's nice to have a car although it does annoy me I, I so I got out a bank loan and I got a really good deal on my fine on my bank loan it's a really cheap it's like three percent on the loan it was really good um, what that means is I'm only paying back three percent extra of what I took out which is nothing really um, you know car finance is way way higher like over ten percent usually so I got a really good deal with my bank um, and so I only pay back the loan only cost me a hundred pounds a month however my car insurance is ridiculous ridiculous um, I don't know if it works in the same way in other countries but in the UK you get what's called no claims bonus so your car insurance uh, goes down each year you have you don't make a claim in other words you legally have to have car insurance in the UK so you have to have your MMT you have to have your car tax you have to have insurance car tax is cheap on my car because it's um, uh, got a small engine is based upon emissions. I pay like 20 quid for my car tax, so it's like nothing. I don't, I don't really care. But um, yeah, so you have to get an MOT, so that's like another 50 quid a year if it passes everything. If you don't have to replace anything, and then um, the uh, car insurance is where the real cost comes in because I hadn't driven a car for six years I lost my no claims bonus um, that I had built up um, when I had my Ford KA um, or car I don't know the right way to pronounce it but when I had that oh we actually need to stop off here and sleep that's one thing you have to think about in this game is your uh, ability to sleep it looks like we can park right here which is pretty cool you get really tired and then you get fined for being tired uh, okay we just made seven thousand pounds from another one of our drivers that's good because i got a five thousand pound loan to pay off each day um so i was a bit worried i didn't have any money for that okay let's check around here there's a couple of a couple of trucks coming Exactly, the you know fastest out of the gate, are we? Oh, we're in Belgium now, by the way. That's cool. Uh, where was I? Yeah, car insurance. I think we can stop indicating now. Um, <laughs> car insurance, as I said, so I lost my no claims bonus, and I thought I'd be paying somewhere around about six hundred pounds a year, which is a lot, but I figured that much because obviously I'm over thirty-five, um, which it should go down after that and my car's not very big my car insurance is £1,100 a year <laughs> yeah welcome to London uh, yeah it, it's ridiculous utterly ridiculous but it should go down soon I got my car in October so um, it will come down I don't know by how much but hopefully by a couple of hundred pounds or something um and eventually I'll get it down to quite a low amount and also if I move out of London it will go down because London obviously being a big city you know 
uh, your cars at a higher risk of you know either being damaged or stolen so you know you have to do it um, there are two different types of insurance you can get in the UK one is uh, fully comprehensive which covers you for everything costs you for being in an accident um, you know they'll pay your bill and well, if it's your fault they'll pay the, the bill of the person you crashed into uh, if there's a fire and your car is damaged and if there's um, stolen or you can just get a third party fire and theft which will cover just the cost of the person you hit if it was your fault um, if it gets stolen if there's a fire it won't cover the cost of repairing your vehicle and that can be good sometimes because it's a bit cheaper it can be good if your car's not worth a lot if your car's worth like 500 quid you might be like well you know, if I do crash my car and it gets totally destroyed or really expensive, I'd just buy another car because it was so cheap, you know. Um, if that's the case, you know, and you can save a bit of money, it doesn't save you too much, but um, obviously I went fully comprehensive. My car's worth, I, I paid £5,000 for my car, so, like, you know, I don't want to if I crash it, um, which I haven't yet, touch wood. Actually, I did crash it a little bit. I'll go into that in a minute. But um, if you... If I do happen to, you know, crash it, I obviously want it to get repaired. And if, God forbid, it crashed so badly that the car was unrepairable, uh, it was written off. Essentially, is what they call it. Oh my God! Oh my God! I'm so nearly hitting that truck behind me. Um, <laughs> uh, I was going on up here. I think there's some roadworks there. Okay, we'll let. Polaris lines pull across a little bit. Left that light, didn't you? Oh, you can hear the roadworks in the background. It's resurfacing. That's super cool. Super, super cool. Um, okay, we're just going straight on along here. Uh, what was I saying? Um, what are you doing, you joker? Put it away in front of me. Absolute madman. We need some petrol as well at some point, but I think we're okay right now. Uh, we're going straight on. This guy's crazy. Uh, uh, we're getting away from him. Uh, yeah, I was saying I did actually... Well, I did hit another car. But it was so light, it didn't do any damage. So the guy was, like, fine about it. But um, basically what happened was... Uh, I was driving um, along. And there was, like, a queue to pull up at the junction. I just misjudged it. I wasn't concentrating. It had been a long journey. And I just tapped the back of the car in front of me. Like, just a little tap. Nothing to, like, set off any airbags or, you know, we both got out. I had a look. I apologised to him. I said, look, I'm really sorry. He was nice about it. He was absolutely fine. Um, and, uh, you know, he had a look and he's like, there doesn't seem to be any damage. You know, let me take your number just in case. Um, so we did that. And, uh, that was that, and that was about three months ago, so I'm guessing his car's fine. <laughs> uh, he was, like, an older guy, and he seemed nice, so I don't think he was the sort of person to, like, get home and, you know, smash off his back bumper and then make a claim or anything like that. So, um, that was fine, really, but honestly, you do not want to have a crash. You really, really don't want to have a crash. Your car insurance will go through the roof. Um... But, you know, £1,100 for me is actually quite cheap. Uh, there's a, a girl at work, and she's paying close to £2,000 a month, for, not month, a year. Jesus, that would be a lot. A year for a car insurance, just for her car insurance. That's like, that's like 175 quid just for the car insurance. It's such a rip-off. But, man, as I said, welcome to London. Like, it sucks, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, we've just got to live with that. Look at this car up ahead, by the way. What the hell is that thing? It's like a sports car. I've never seen something like that before. Actually, is it a police car? I think it might be a police car. I'm stuck at 55. Oh, sorry, 56 now, which is the speed limit. So I've got it in miles per hour, but because it's kilometres per hour, it would be, I don't know, what, 70 kilometres, something like that. As so we're just kind of pooling it along here. Okay. <laughs> okay, I checked my mirrors, right? I am a terrible driver in this game, though. 
I would like to think I'm better in real life. I'm not a speed merchant. I, I take my time. I'm quite aware usually. Um, and I don't do dumb things, hopefully. So I think I'm a better driver in real life. My girlfriend doesn't think I'm a good driver. Uh, because I was driving with her one day and I did clip a curb. Um, and that did shake her up a bit. It wasn't necessarily my fault. I was going round and round about. It was dark and it was raining. And there was a guy in a BMW who was cutting me up on the roundabout. Like he was trying, he was undertaking me on the roundabout. And like, I didn't see that uh, the road kind of, as I was pulling off my turning, the road kind of like cut in a little bit. And I didn't notice that. So I, I hit the curb uh, a little bit. No damage to my car. Um, or anything like that but uh, um, yeah she was not impressed with that so she thinks I'm a bad driver but I, I do say I'm not a bad driver it's, you know it was one incident <laughs> I've driven like a lot of miles it was one incident and when I was younger I had a crash it, uh, it was uh, the worst crash I've had but it wasn't that bad thankfully um, let's go get some petrol this is going to cost us isn't it
but it is 8 o'clock in the evening I guess I've been driving for quite a long time already uh, 9 hours I think we may have to sleep again but we do have tw plenty of time to do this um, journey so that's ok um, anyway I was talking about having a crash when I was younger so when I had the Fiat Punto um, I was driving along I was actually driving to a new job uh, in Camberley uh, if people know where Camberley is and uh, it, um, I was driving along again, rainy day. I was driving on the motorway. Uh, I had plenty of space between me and the car in front, which was a Volvo. That's important to know. And he broke quite suddenly because the car in front of him broke very suddenly. And probably because the car in front of him broke suddenly, you know, the way it works. And as I said, I had plenty of space, but he had a Volvo and they have really good brakes. I had a Fiat Punto and it doesn't have good brakes. Didn't have ABS braking at that point. And I just slid, and I slid straight into the back of him, and it did not too much damage. It damaged his bumper, his back bumper, uh, and it damaged my front uh, bumper as well. I smashed them both, um, and I had insurance luckily, so it kind of paid for that. But I did ask him to be like, hey, you know, send me the bill it will cost you outside of uh, um, you know, the insurance, and maybe I'll pay it so I don't lose my no claims he sent me the bill it was like 1500 pounds I was like oh no not happening so uh, I said through insurance it could be that he was lying um, but he did have quite a nice car it was a Ford I can't remember what model but it was quite nice so maybe he wasn't it was one of those like colour coded bumpers which obviously are like really common nowadays but this was like 15 years ago so they were a little bit rarer I remember when in my KA uh, someone knocked my wing mirror off where I was parking uh, and um, uh, to get a new one was £150 because <laughs> it was like colour coded to the body I was like this is ridiculous uh, for a flipping wing mirror you know um, but my new car actually has um, the little button which makes your wing mirrors fold inwards it's so cool I love it uh, even though I don't really need it um, it's very cool and uh, sometimes I, I just press it anyway to bring them in and then I drive around and I forget that they're in and then I look and I go oh whoops and I have to press the button while I'm moving it's the coolest thing in my car I think uh, but that's it when I'm like just cruising around normally um, well just driving anywhere I always like to listen to the radio uh, I prefer doing that more than listening to my own music or anything like that uh, or like a podcast or something like that sometimes as well I um, I, I mostly listen to like the sports radio as well I, I like doing that um, talk sport is it's a favourite of mine not because it's particularly good but sometimes because it, it's just so like uh, I don't know what the term would be without being really derogatory but it's so like it, 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 I, don't know, I don't know what the word is but the, the general gist of it is it's, it's a radio station where there's no music there's only talking and it's it's all about different sports mostly the majority of the time football um, and it's got different presenters on at different times as you would normally expect sometimes it has a presenter and then a sportsman with them and it's very sort of like working class I guess you would call it it's very sort of like you know down to earth nice and humble you know you know that sort of that sort of thing um, but I kind of love it for that um, it's unapologetically like un PC you know it really is um, so yeah It's funny sometimes to listen to it. There are some presenters on there who are really good and really like, uh, you know, very sensible people. And there's some of them on there who are like, I wouldn't call them shock jocks, but they often have opinions which are purposely controversial, shall we say. And uh, it's funny sometimes it's to that and listening to people get upset about it uh, as well is also hilarious. And I also listen to Radio 5 Live, um, which is a BBC sports radio 
well it kind of is sports radio it's sometimes when there's not sports on it it's more about like current affairs shall we say but um when there is like sports on uh it's, it's a the bbc sports radio you know so they do a lot of sports related have games on and stuff like that so they, they commentate and um that's obviously a lot more sensible because it's the bbc uh and they have to be a lot more pc and a lot more like unoffensive to people but they have some really good presenters on there i wouldn't say they're not unoffensive like they have some presenters with quite um you know controversial opinions about football but about real life nah nah if you want to work for the bbc it's like working for disney you know you have to be like very very pc uh but as i said they do have some like ex-footballers on chris sutton being the main one who is often quite controversial with what he says uh, sometimes I think on purpose, but who knows? Um, but uh, it's generally pretty good. Uh, or Robbie Savage as well is uh, another guy who's very uh, controversial. Um, but uh, yeah, I like listening to that as well. <coughs> Sorry, jeez, that was close. And then he just crashed because I had to, had to cough quickly. Why am I doing over 50 and these cars are flying past me? <laughs> Where's the police when you need them? Too busy giving me tickets, aren't they? There we go. Um, yeah, but they have this... Uh, phone-in show as well on there which is hilarious sometimes uh, as well like just the, the opinions of people phoning in is hilarious sometimes um, the stuff they come out with like the delusion of some football fans is incredible uh, but yeah anyway I talk enough about football and other videos on this channel that I'm not going to start talking about it now um, I don't think football's it can be quite a polarising subject. I think sometimes it depends on whether you want it to be polarising or not. But I know, like, there are people who are just not interested in it whatsoever. And that's totally fine. Wow, I very nearly hit that guy as well. That's totally fine. We'll just talk about trucks and the smashing interior of my truck. Although I do dislike um, just left of the steering wheel. You can see those banker switches. I hate the blank switch dummies in there. I'd have to like put in some fake switches in there just to make me feel better about that. But this is supposed to be like the top of the line cabin, you know? And then it's got blank switches and I'm like, ugh. Ugh. That's disgusting. I like the uh, speedo and everything though, it's really cool. I'd like to get one which just that was all digital though, that would be also pretty cool. Uh, coming into 10 hours now so we're roughly I think it was 22 to begin with so we're over halfway uh, and we're actually going to have to turn off here um, we're only our sleep's only about halfway so I think we will have to sleep again but it shouldn't be too long I don't think oh for fuck's sake fucking police were right behind me when we came off there that's 2,200 on the bloody speeding violation. Ah, well, easy come, easy go on the old money front, right? 25 miles an hour feels so slow when you've been driving at like 55. Here we go. Look at it. It's so slow. Everywhere in London is like 20 miles an hour. It's so... <laughs> It's not annoying because you can't go more than 20 miles an hour because there are speed bumps everywhere. Like literally everywhere there are speed bumps and it's just the worst. I hate speed bumps. I know why they do it because otherwise people will just you know, go crazy miles an hour. That's why I hope we get automated cars sooner rather than later and they just stick to the speed limit and everyone can just do that uh, I think like it won't happen for a while because you know people are so old fashioned they're just like oh I want to get my car I want to drive fast in my car you know I want to feel the roar 
of the engine and all this kind of stuff and it's like oh no just give me a just give me an automatic like car i'll get in it it'll drive me to work at the exact speed limit uh it won't crash it won't make any errors it'll be a nice smooth journey uh it won't accidentally not see a speed bump and go on it you know it will it will just be nice i can you know read the paper or play a game on my phone or something like that or put a playstation in it play on a playstation in the car i could do something like that anyway while it's driving me but uh yeah there'll always be some people who are just like no i need to drive my car i need to be in control of my car I don't know. I think we, w I will see like fully automated cars driving around as just a normal thing in um, my lifetime. Okay, we're gonna turn off here and sleep. I think. Um, yeah, I think it. I think we will do, but I don't think it'll be for like another twenty, twenty-five years. Uh, to be completely honest, I know they're doing tests now, but I think for people to really really feel comfortable um like we can have to park up somewhere around here oh we can park up here it's nice and easy people to feel really comfortable i think it will take a little while okay you're getting some rest nine hours ten minutes that's a smashing looking uh, truck though isn't it Look at that. It's a special edition Route 66 Renault. Uh, I like it. I like that very flat front on it. Uh, we, there is American Truck Simulator as well, which has the more kind of like... Uh, like, you know, the, the longer nosed trucks, whereas European trucks are obviously more flatter. I don't know why that is. I guess... I don't know actually. I guess it's just an aesthetic thing, maybe. Who knows? I guess it's daytime now again. And you know, this game, graphically, it's obviously not going to be up there with the best looking games ever, but it's one of those games where the overall view is the thing, you know, everything pieces together and looks great as an overall view, you know. Um, the, you know, those wind turbines in the distance just look great, you know, sometimes you see a, a, a nice landmark in the distance, it looks amazing. Uh, my personal favourite areas are France, because there was a Viva uh, Le France, um, like DLC, which made France look really nice, and Scandinavia, which is just, as you can imagine, really, really awesome. Like Switzerland also looks really good in this uh, it's, it's quite mountainous You drive around the mountains a fair bit But um, yeah It's uh, It looks pretty darn awesome Some nice sunsets Some nice views you know And the bridges look great going over them and stuff So I obviously hope that we see A um, Euro Truck Simulator 3 I, I'm sure we will This game is a big success. Um, they've been very diligent with the up uh, the DLC packs. Um, we've had quite a few. The one area that's missing is Spain, uh, Spain and Portugal. So I would imagine that we'll see a DLC for that first, and then we will uh, probably move on to number three after that because otherwise you've done it. Or Russia, I guess there isn't. Um, there's an uh, Eastern European um, called Going East, I think it is, uh, DLC. But I don't think there's a Russia DLC. Now, the problem with Russia is it would be flipping huge. Uh, to drive from one side of Russia to the other side of Russia would um, literally take you... Uh, it must be like four or five times than just the width of Europe. Um, so, I, I don't know if we'll see that or what would happen with that but it would be pretty epic I think to drive from say you know the edge of France or even Portugal if they had that all the way across to the edge of Russia you know like the um, you know the far 
far east of Russia where it kind of gets towards China and Japan and then hey they could even add in China and Japan uh, it would be pretty pretty awesome uh, that would be really really cool but uh, I, I don't know I haven't heard anything from them or there hasn't been any rumours as far as I'm aware of the next pack and I, I imagine Spain will be what it is it would surprise me if it wasn't uh, because it's it's quite a large country, but they did France uh, as a DLC. Uh, you had a bit of France before, but they kind of like extended it out, um, added in extra places, made it look really nice. It does look really nice as well. Added in some of the big bridges and landmarks that they have there. Um, and yeah, what's this coming up here? Oh, this is just a field. Okay, makes sense. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's a wonderful little game. You can get it so cheap nowadays. I, I always recommend it. You know, um, the DLC packs will still cost you a bit, but if you get a Steam sale, I think you can get like this game plus all the DLC packs, probably thirty quid. And um, you might think, well, God, that seems like a lot of money. You can always buy the base game for. I, I've seen it for a fiver in a sale, and then if you like it, you know, you can. You can choose then what you want to do. Um, I have all the DLC because <laughs> I love this game so much. Uh, uh, all the DLC, the little like paint jobs and packs and all that type of stuff. I picked them all up in Steam sales for quite cheap prices, so uh, it's well worth it. Okay, we must be in Germany now because we're heading towards Leipzig, Munich, and Nuremberg. Uh, Erfurt is off to the right. We're just carrying on along the uh, motorway. Now I guess this is like an autobahn, which there shouldn't technically be a speed limit, but I guess maybe for trucks there is. Or at least in the game there is. There's some other trucks over there. Looking good. Guys looking good. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Fucking police cars. That's 3,300 quid. I've lost in speedy fights. I don't... I've not even been that fast. Screw you. Please, screw you. If there's GTA, I'd get my Uzi out. to shoot through, through the window. But it's not. It's your truck sim, and you can't do anything like that. Um... This is where I probably do want cruise control, isn't it? Just activate that. It's just annoying when the speed limit is five mile an hour less than what you can do at your top speed. <laughs> and so you just keep getting speed tickets like that. Because you just, you know, you habitually just hold the trigger down to drive. I do have like automatic, oh we've got a tunnel coming up ladies and gents, a tunnel coming up. Let's move outside, I know it's a little bit louder so I apologise but I do like the outside view when we're going through interesting things. Oh no, here we go. It's not that long. There we go. Come out the other side. Looks like someone's been doing some logging off to the right there. It's a lovely day as well here in uh, Germany. Shamana. I love how quiet it is in this cabin as well when you're just pootling along, you know. It's very uh, relaxing. Look at us going. 57 miles an hour there.
I'm having trouble just keeping this thing in a straight line, actually. It's a great game, though, to just come home to, unwind, chill out, relax. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Outside, so it's kind of like a nice summery day without being extortionately hot. It has been a hot summer here in the UK, that's for sure. It's 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 quiet down a lot now. It was only about 20 degrees. Oh god, I thought it was a speeding fine. Uh, that's my loan I've paid 15 grand. Yeah, um, yeah, and like I think this weekend, which is a bank holiday weekend in the UK, coming up. Um, might not be when this video goes up, but it is in reality. Um, it's not going to be that warm either. And last year it was a really hot bank holiday. It was like one of the hottest ever. So it's, it's cooled down a little bit now, which is kind of nice. I'm not one for the heat. I actually saw a friend of mine. Um, I had this meeting uh, yesterday, and I hadn't seen him in a while. And he was like, uh, "Oh, you know, hey, how you doing?" I'm like, "Yeah, good, you know, you." And he's like, "Oh, it's been such a hot summer." He was like. You must hate it. I know you hate the heat. <laughs> that's like, that's the thing you remember. I haven't seen you in about two years, and that's the thing you remember. Uh, but yeah, I don't like the heat uh, at all. That's not why I live in England. You know, <laughs> I don't live in England for the, the summer sun. I live in England for the temperate, average temperature. And because I'm English, and because I can't speak any other languages, etc., etc. Um, but yeah, I'm not a sun worshipper any level or shape or form. Having said that, I'm not opposed to it being... Like, I like it when I go outside and it's nice, you know, like the blue sky and not that many clouds around and, you know, you can kind of like wear what you want and not be that cold. Like, obviously that's really nice. But if you had to say to me, do I prefer the winter or the summer? I'd probably go for the winter, weirdly. It's just a bit nicer wearing a coat or something like that and a hat, I find, than having to wear something that just gets really sweaty and heavy and horrible and sticky, you know, in the really hot summer. So, yeah, I'll take that. hours two minutes so we're kind of like we've done what well we've got 208 miles left of germanic countryside then we go to austria and i'm actually partially austrian my grandmother was austrian um I keep meaning to do one of those like um ancestry tests uh I, i'd be very interested to know because on my father's side um his parents are uh, from the northeast of England, um, and uh, on my mother's side, um, like my grandmother's Austrian, my grandfather's English, and um, like I'd be interested to know like what other kind of roots I have, and I have like a, uh, uh, I have like brown hair, but I have a ginger beard, so that's often a sign of like Viking roots, which might make sense from like my father's side if they're in the northeast, generally. Uh, that means that at some point, uh, you know, back in the day, the Vikings were involved in some way, probably not in a nice way, but in some way in your kind of like, uh, your way of life. So I could have like Viking blood in me as well. Uh, I've always liked the Vikings, so it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I love it when people say things like that. They're like, oh yeah, I'm like partially like Spanish, and I, uh, so I, I just love paella. And you're like, that's, that's not the way it works. <laughs> Uh, you can't be like, oh, I'm Kenyan, so I really love coffee, or uh, I'm Chinese, so I really love fireworks, you know, <laughs> it's just, it just doesn't make sense, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm 25% South Korean, so I really love Samsung TVs, it's like, it's got nothing to do with your uh, genetics, but um, I hope I wasn't being too stereotypical there.
know, I think I picked some of the best things those countries are known for, you know. Not the only things, obviously. They have a wide range of exports and imports in those countries, but you got my gist. I wonder what the English equivalent would be to that. Probably something really boring like fish and chips. Uh, like, oh yeah, I'm 25% English, that's why I love fish and chips. Oh, hello, big bridge. Let's go. This is a big one, isn't it? Look at this. Look at this bad boy. Let's try and get the scenic. Get difficult to see, game. <laughs> My parking brake was engaged. I don't know if I got a fine there or not for hitting that car. I don't know. Uh, but I panicked and accidentally engaged my parking brake, so we won't do that again. No, we won't. Some nice, like, picturesque scenes here. Do I need petrol? No. Sleep. No, we'll make it for another three hours, 46 minutes, absolutely. We shouldn't have to stop anymore. The one thing I actually love as well, too, is weird things I love about driving again, like especially on long journeys. I love stopping off at petrol stations nowadays. Petrol stations, when I was younger, were literally like, you used to get a petrol pump, you go inside and there'd be like maybe some sweets, a can of Coke or something like that, and that'd be it. Nowadays, you walk in a petrol station, it's like, it's like Disneyland in there for food. You know, there's like, a lot of them actually have like little kind of mini supermarkets attached to them. And you're just like, there's so much to choose here. I could eat everything here, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, so I really like it. Uh, I know that's so sad as well, <laughs> to be like, oh, I love stopping off petrol stations, but uh, I always do. My favourite are definitely the... Um, the BP garages um, they often have like what's called the wild bean cafe <laughs> I sound so sad now. oh we're coming into Austria uh, that's cool we are in Austria Austria I'm inside you um, yeah the wild bean cafe they have which is like they do like pastries and danishes and like fresh coffee and stuff like that which you can pick up and they often have a range of like Marks and Spencer's food stuff and those who know anything about English like supermarkets know that Marks and Spencer's they make good food it's expensive but it's real good um, so yeah I always try and stop off at the BP where I can not like everyone I go across but when I'm like I need to go to a garage I generally tend to the, the second best one are usually a shell garage I find definitely not as exciting as a BP no wild bean cafe for a start but it, they'll suffice you know and then you get other ones like say Total and, and stuff like that and uh, one that I always used to have when I was younger at Texaco never usually see them anymore nowadays sad very very sad very very sad it's a nice tunnel I like the nice green accents they've got on those like support pillars it's very funky uh Tunnels don't scare me as much as bridges in real life, but there's a particular tunnel in uh, London called the Blackwall Tunnel. I think it's a Blackwall Tunnel. Something like that. It's pretty horrible. It goes underneath the Thames. It goes really deep. Uh, and then you kind of come out along the other side. Oh, I hate it so much. Uh, I've only gone across it a few times. But you go from south to north across the Thames in, in the tunnel. If you're coming south, uh, if you're going from the north to the south across the Thames, you go across the Dartford Crossing, uh, which is a, a, a bridge. Oh no, that's what the tunnel's called, sorry, the Dartford Crossing, yeah. Oh, Blackmore Tunnel's another tunnel, I think, anyway. Um, the Dartford Tunnel is the one you have. The Dartford Crossing is this huge bridge, and I hate it so much, I never go on it anymore. I nearly had like a panic attack on the top of it once, it was horrible. Um, because I was stuck in traffic.
traffic. Like, I don't mind a bridge. If I can get on a bridge and I can go across the other side in my car, fine. No problem with that. As long as it's short, you know, no problems. I can do that. It's where I stop on the bridge because of traffic. Oh, I hate that so much. And uh, I had that on the Dartford Crossing and it was, oh, it's horrible. And I was like, stop. Right. And it is such a high bridge. Like, Google a picture of it. Um, it is so high. Um, oh, I've, I still like wake up in like a cold sweats and I thought of that day you know it was not nice and ever since then I, I don't think I've ever used that tunnel before <laughs> uh, like literally going way out my way or that bridge sorry to not use it if I ever go that way but I very rarely do actually nowadays to be fair I go more north uh, more than anything yeah, well, look at this scenery in Austria the mountains and everything like that looks awesome. Yeah, like Austria, Switzerland, they do look really nice. Uh, Italy's the, the, the most recent um, uh, update they've had. Uh, I was going to have a look and see if they had that bridge in um, Genoa that collapsed so tragically, uh, which was incredibly sad and like just horrible. Um, I was going to see if they had that in it, but I thought that would actually be really distasteful to actually drive <laughs> over that bridge. Because um, that was like a really horrible tragedy. I don't know if you saw it, but there was this quite a high bridge uh, in Genoa that collapsed. Um, yeah, while people were crossing it, um, not sure why. I think they said there was a lot of rain, but you would imagine that bridges should withstand quite a lot of rain. It's, it's, they're kind of like suing the company who runs it. Uh, it's so kind of like a toll bridge, I think. But, um, yeah, real, real tragedy. Uh, what happened? I, uh, I, I don't even know if it is in the game or not. I didn't even look it up at the end. I was just like, yeah, maybe just do that on your own. And don't record a video if you really do, like that. Wow, look at this view. Holy moly. Uh, if I'm that kind of like, oh, not obsessed, but if I, if I really want to see it that much. Then I'd, I'd probably do a uh, toll. Okay. Okay, we've got a toll, which means we have to pay the toll to go on these roads. That, that happens more when you get into Europe. France is especially um, an arsehole about it. Um, French ones can be like 40, 50 uh, upwards euros. That was 8 euros, which I'm certainly not going to complain too much about. That's that's a perfectly reasonable fee to use a toll road. Obviously in real life that would be awful, but um, not as much as the French. The French are bad. Like their toll roads are so pricey. They could be wrong, they're nice, but the pricing's out. Look at Austria, how nice it is around here. Like the little chateaus up on top of the hills and stuff. It's awesome. I love like the changes in scenery that you get from country to country when you drive around in it. And as I said, it's not one for one scale. Um, as you can probably tell by the fact that we've nearly driven a, a what, 22 hour journey, I think it was something like that. Um, but um, it is uh, condensed down, but you still get that nice change in like uh, scenery and climate and know whatever for, for the places you actually go to so it's pretty cool let's just overtake this guy and I'm speeding but stop the police they ain't gonna get me this time I'm flying past this truck okay now I'll actually slow down now I'm past that truck I don't want to get another speeding ticket I've already paid 3,000 in fines <laughs> which is completely my own fault by the way uh, mountains as well, I noticed I'll have to have a look at my settings and see what they're set to. I do get a, a steady 60 though in this. I think I play a 2k though, I don't think it handles 4k very well. Sometimes struggles a little bit. Um, I know like American truck sim definitely struggled a little bit as well at 4k so I, I turned that down to 2. 
American truck sim doesn't have the whole America it has um, from like California Nevada Arizona I think I think that's what it has um, which is kind of cool like America's a big place obviously but I haven't done many updates to it I'd love to see them actually recreate the whole of America that'd be awesome to drive from you know, east coast to west coast like in the crew but you know good uh, I was so disappointed with the crew too I must admit I was actually like mm. this could actually be a really interesting game and I felt like it came out that's 20 euros and I'm happy about that um, I felt like it came out at uh, a good time um, well before Forza and stuff like that but it was just so bland it really was uh, uh, car just hit me. Um, didn't seem to do any damage or anything, so I think we're okay. Got a nice tunnel coming up. Let's go like a bit more scenic. Should I overtake this guy? Let's go. Let's go, let's go. see the entrance uh, exit sorry oh no it's not the exit oh my god it's long tunnel it's actually a legit but long tunnel Things uh, like 
gives you more money per job and, and allows you to take on longer jobs and stuff like that basically. This isn't going to be hard to park here. <laughs> See, I just do. There we go. Dropping the trailer off. Are we done? 911 miles. 38 hours. 724 uh, litres of fuel consumed. So we made 56,000 for that journey. Um, got proficiency bonuses, skill ranks. We, we had a damage penalty, unfortunately, because of that little crash. And we, another, we lost another 4,000, so we made 52,000 from that journey, which is not bad at all. Um, I never looked at my progress history. Your statistics. just literally around the corner for special cargo, it's not very far. Hamburg, is there nothing going to France? Apparently not. Don't like delivering things to France around here. We've got a bit more cash anyway. Um, the upgrade stuff you can see here. You can, you can like upgrade all sorts of things. Um, on there. And for some reason my mouse just decided to stop. There we go. Um, and where's my company? Profit for the last seven days, 262,000. Good. Excellent. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've got four different trucks. A DAF, a Volvo. The DAF was the one I started in. You can see the distance driven is quite far. That's now being driven by another lady. And yeah, that's my one, the Renault um, Magnum. Um, my next truck I want to get should have a Mercedes. There we go. Ah, we're going to do that. I like that. Anyway, Mercedes, I think, is the one I, I want next. I just wanted to view a truck, but I don't know if I can do that. Uh, which is fine. I'll show you another time, but um, yeah, the Mercedes one I think is the one I, I want next. But uh, till then, guys, thank you for watching. It has, of course, been my pleasure, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.